In our previous video, we looked at the problem of dependency conflicts and how to solve them. In this guide, we'll see how to help avoid such problems from occurring in the first place. Here's a Divio Cloud project that I've got set up locally. It has Django Axes installed, which provides me with access logs right in the Django admin. I've installed it by adding Django Axes to the requirements file. So when the project is built, the requirements file is processed by pip and dependencies and their dependencies are installed. Now, what I want to do here is simply stop the project and then rebuild it again. And this rebuilding is the process that will take place whenever the project is deployed on the cloud or set up locally. And I haven't changed anything at all in the project. The only thing I'm doing is running build. And that's completed. It has installed the dependencies again if they needed it. And we'll take it up with Docker Compose up. And it's starting up. And immediately we see that we've run into an unhandled exception. So the question is what has happened since the project was running perfectly well just a few moments ago? And I didn't change anything. The only thing I did was rebuild it. The answer lies here. Although we've specified Django axes, we haven't specified which version. And pip will always take the latest available version that it can find to install. So although when I first set up this project, it worked with the version of Django axes that was available, in the meantime, what has happened, a new version of Django axes has been released and become available, and that's no longer compatible with the way the settings are configured in this project, which worked with the old version. Let's take a quick look at that. If I do a docker compose run dash dash rm web, this means launch the web container and then dispose of it afterwards and run the pip list command in it. We'll see that the version of Django axes that's installed in there is version 5.0.4. Now, I happen to know that the version that was installed when this project was working wasn't 5.0.4, it was 3.0.3, .3, a rather older version. So if I pin that here and now run build again, and then take the project up, we see now that it is in fact working happily. So that unpinned dependency allowed a newer incompatible version to be picked up and installed. And that was our problem. So it's always a really good idea to pin your dependencies so that you know exactly what's being installed and you avoid surprises. Surprises are okay when it's your birthday, but not when you're doing a website deployment. Of course, I want to make sure that that version is used in the project when it's deployed on the cloud or when I set it up on other computers. So of course, let's use Git to um, make sure that it's incorporated into the repository. So let's do Git add requirements, uh, Git commit pinned Django axes, and we can push that to the cloud. And now that's safely pinned. And that's a good thing to do. Always pin your dependencies when you can. The problem is that if you remember when we looked at the list of packages that were installed by pip, it's not just the few packages that are listed here. It's a whole number of other things that are installed because each one of these requirements can have its own requirements and they in turn may have theirs too. So dependencies can have further dependencies and an unpinned dependency anywhere in that chain of requirements can leave you liable for a surprise of just this kind, which might be a runtime failure like we just saw, or perhaps a, a dependency conflict. So what we want to do is try to find a way to pin every dependency that's used in the project. Let's first of all explain how the requirements are processed. It happens in the Docker file here when the project is built. So at build time, what's going to happen is that pip, recs, pip requirements is going to compile this little list 
and from it, it's going to derive a complete list of everything complete with its version numbers. And then that finally will be what's installed. So let's use the terminal and see if we can generate a list of all those packages that we have installed in our project now. So docker compose run dash dash rm web. And this time it's going to be pip requirements compile just like it was in the Docker file itself. This will take a moment. And when it's completed, it has created a new requirements.txt file here, auto generated by pip compile. And that tells me not only the exact versions of all the things, but tells us where they're coming from, which other requirements have specified them. Now this file is a complete list of all the dependencies that I need in this project and that are guaranteed to work because they're all pinned. We need to do one more thing to make use of that file. And that is, instead of compiling the requirements here freshly, we're just going to allow it to use this pre-compiled version. So let's remove that. And now it doesn't matter what I have in here, even if I leave this unpinned, for example, and run docker compose build, we'll see that it's going to use my full list of requirements here. And if I run a docker compose up, we'll find that it's used those versions and the project is running successfully. I now have a repository that I know is going to work on the cloud and that is going to pull in all the right pip dependencies, even if I come back to it and try to deploy a, in a year's time when many of the packages that I'm using will have been updated. So what I would need to do is a git. Uh, let's just check what things I've changed. It should be the requirements.txt and the docker file. Yes. So git add docker file and requirements.txt git commit dash m. Uh, pinned all dependencies and get push. So those changes are now pushed. And if I deploy here, it's going to make use of those. And I can be sure that whenever I hit that button, I'm going to have a deployment that works. Have a look at our documentation. It has more on the subject and explains this in more detail. I hope you found this useful and instructive.